Hi, this is Jessie Ledoux, Miss International 2013, Class of 2010, and you're watching ICTV. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Inside Iona. I'm Kyle Byrne. And I'm Chrissy Bookie. Let's see what's happening inside Iona. The Iona community slept on the steps of Spelman Hall for a good cause, and we'll tell you why. 34 gales joined a crowd of 400,000 for the People's Climate March in Manhattan. Inside Iona was there on the scene. Emma Kaha Ina performs this week on Chrissy's Couch. Stay tuned for her performance. We also have Anthony Carlo's I See Gale Sports Report and Cassie Lina with your entertainment spotlight. All this and more in this episode of Inside Iona. October 5th kicked off Make a Difference Week, sponsored by the Office of Mission and Ministry. It started with the annual kickball game, Best Buddies vs. the Success Center Tutoring Program. Inside Iona reporter Osvaldo Garcia caught up with some of the players. Uh, it was a lot of work. We've been planning ever since school started, uh, but luckily we had a great committee. Uh, we had a Make a Difference Week committee, um, and it was just such a challenging but amazing process. Uh, one of our big new things about this semester is that we really wanted to have as many people involved and participate in cheer um, as possible. So that was, uh, that was one of our big challenges, but I think we succeeded. Um, and this year we actually have uh, some lovely individuals from Alarsh. So Alarsh is an organization that lives in community uh, and faith with people with disabilities. Uh, so this year we have two members, two of their core members, who are the core members are individuals who have disabilities and three of their facilitators. Uh, so we have uh, two houses that came from, one came from Syracuse um, and the other one came from Boston. So they're here with us, they played a little bit of the game and it was just a great time to have them. First I thought we will lose, but then at last we won. A group of 34 Iona students, faculty, and staff joined over 400,000 on September 21st for the People's Climate March. This event was part of a string of awareness campaigns taking place in 166 countries over the weekend to urge global leaders at the United Nations to draft a resolution on climate change. Inside Iona got the marchers' reactions. Um, I came to be a part of the largest climate march uh, to take place yet. Uh, today there were over 310,000 people uh, marching uh, to support climate change and, and send a message to all of the heads of state that will be meeting at the UN uh, in just a couple of days that things need to change. I came to this march because, like Dr. Seuss said, if someone like you doesn't care a whole, whole lot, nothing's going to change. It's not. Uh, I came to this climate change march because it's really important that, as Iona, we embrace the Move the World uh, campaign that we have going. I'm here today because I want to walk with future generations into a new kind of world. Elizabeth Burleson, founder of the Burleson Institute, providing research and analysis on climate change, delivered a speech in Iona's Romita Auditorium on September 23rd titled, Engaging the Environment, Law, Ecology, and the World. Burleson is one of 20 academics selected to meet with the Peruvian government to discuss climate change. The key climate message is that people individually and collectively have the capacity to build momentum so that leaders can help solve the collective action problem. There are a lot of elements to uh, the climate matrix and they involve uh, you know, really innovating and sharing that innovation, not just in the uh, laboratories, government, academic, uh, you know, individual innovator, but really getting broad implementation underway of uh, climate solutions. It's October, which means Breast Cancer Awareness Month. October 2nd, Phi Sigma Sigma Sorority, the Edmund Rice Society, and Colleges Against Cancer hosted Paint It Pink event in the Lapenta parking lot to raise awareness and funds for breast cancer research. 
All proceeds went to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. So Phi Sig Edmund Rice and Colleges Against Cancer is here today. Um, we're raising awareness about breast cancer because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's really important to Phi Sig because the sisters have had family members, mothers, aunts who have suffered and even died from breast cancer. So we really want Iona to know about the issue. And today you can uh, leave your handprint or you can buy a goodie and everything is themed pink. Let's turn it over to Anthony Carlo and see what's happening inside athletics. Hi, I'm Anthony Carlo with your Iona Gale Sports Report. After a grueling road swing, the men's soccer team capped off their non-conference stretch with a satisfying win over Columbia at Mazzella Field in their home opener. Columbia zeroed in on the dangerous Ignacio Maganto and were exploited by rookie midfielder Matias Correa and sophomore forward Teddy Forsen, who both provided the offense for the Gales. Sophomore goalkeeper Julian Petrello recorded a shutout, providing the stellar defense. The win was the first of many as the Maroon and Gold moved on to take the MAC opener from Siena in a tight one nothing contest. Once again, it was freshman Matias Correa who was the hero on the day with Iona's only goal. In the 59th minute, Maganto put a shot on goal that was blocked by Siena's goalkeeper Josh Weiss and Correa followed the block shot up with a missile into the top left part of the net for his second goal of the young season. Our Ross Popping was there for both of these thrilling contests. Hi, I'm Ross Popick reporting for ICTV Sports at Mazella Field where the men's soccer team has won their last two home games. Saturday, the Gales played Columbia where goals from Mateus Correa and Teddy Forsen gave them the win. Beside me, I have Teddy Forsen right here. He scored the second goal in the second half. And uh, how does it feel to have your first goal of the season? I feel very relieved. You know, it's, as, as a forward, it's my duty to score goals. So this is my first goal of the season and it feels really good. And uh, what, do you, what do you think about the game as a whole? Uh, I think we s kind of started off slow. We, we didn't have our best game so far, but we ended up winning the game, so which I'm, I'm good with it. So. On Tuesday, a hard-fought game against Siena gave the Gales a second win at home. How does it feel to score two goals in two games? Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy, but I mean, everything is a team. It's not just me. I'm just another worker, but I'm really happy. It's a good moment. For me right now. This is Ross Popick signing off. Thank you, Ross. The Gales hit the road again, stealing another one in close fashion, one nothing over Ryder. They are now 2-0 in MAC play. Rivals clashed on the first day of October at Mazella Field as the Iona College women's soccer team defeated their rivals, the Manhattan Jaspers, 1-0 for their first conference win. Sophomore forward Erica Flowers netted the big goal on the day and it was a pressure-filled one as well as she scored it with one second remaining in the period. Iona would hang on for the win. Now with the rain falling, the women's team fell to Ryder 2-0 in a soggy loss, dropping them to 1-2-1 and in MAC play. Freshman midfielder Christine Rebus and senior forward Safi Allende both took three shots on goal each. And the Bronx stuck, struck in the 42nd minute and again in the 88th minute to secure the win. As for the Iona College volleyball team, they suffered a tough loss in four sets to Siena in MAC play on September 27th. They've lost four of their last five contests. Ian Sachs was there. Ian? Ian Sachs here at the Heinz Athletic Center where the Iona College volleyball team fell to the Siena Saints in four games. The Gales dropped the first two sets of the match, took the third, but then ultimately lost 26-24 to in the fourth. We kind of flipped it around in game three. And then we played really well, and it was a good fight after that. We just have to understand that we have to come out game one as who we are and not let other teams dictate that. Senior outside hitter Katrina Warren posted a double-double with 15 digs and 11 kills. And classmate Taylor Simbolesti had 11 kills and 9 digs. And then also I think they should take away everybody had good parts. Like Cassie had a game two where she had six kills. I mean, that's a great game two. Um, we all saw that we have parts, but now we need to consistently do it. The maroon and gold dropped to 1-2 and two in the MAC and 4-10 and ten overall. For ICTV, I'm Ian Sachs. For your Iona Gale Sports Report, I'm Anthony Carlo. October is here. Junior Nicole Basso went on campus to ask students about what they're looking forward to most about Halloween. New scary movies and, of course, their favorite candy. Just made some trick-or-treating, you know, buying candy and decorating. So are you going to get dressed up this year? Um, I did last year, but uh, not too many people get dressed up, so i got to see how, how things go. So um, actually, I was terrified back in like sixth grade of Saw, 
But then um, last year, I sat in my dorm and I just watched them all. So Saw is probably one of my one of my big ones. I'm not really a horror movie guy, but like you, I like a little Hocus Pocus. Oh, okay. Because the only thing scary in that movie is Bette Midler. Well, you can't go wrong with Charlie Brown Halloween. Um, classics would be like, you know, uh, Halloween, obviously. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, other Halloween movies, I don't really know. Um, scary movies like Conjuring, that was a very good movie. Well, I'm going out with my friends, we're going trick-or-treating. I know we're a little bit old, but we're going to have a good time. <laughs> I like it. What are you going to dress up as? Me and my friend are have a two-piece two Halloween costume. I'm the head of the horse, he's the back. So are you guys like ready for all like the Halloween candies that are coming out? Oh, like yeah. I already bought like packs of candy corn already, just from that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of stocking up myself. I'm gonna have like Snickers, Reese's. Back to you guys in the studio. ICTV attended a live taping of Democracy Now! on October 3rd. Democracy Now! is a daily independent news hour hosted by award-winning journalists Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez. ICTV members were treated after the show to a Q&A discussion with the guests about alternative media. Chrissy and myself had the opportunity to speak to the educational director at Democracy Now. Take a look. Hi, we're here with Samin, educational director at Democracy Now. Uh, Samin, why is it important to teach students alternative media? Well, I think that um, you know we live in a democracy, and what makes a democracy work is if we know what's going on, uh, what the uh, government is doing, what the various places, what the various people are doing. And so um, journalism, independent journalism, is really important because of that. We need to find out uh, all the sides of a story so that we can, the audience can make up their own mind. Um, so that's, that's one of the uh, reasons why, why Democracy Now! Talk about your operation here and what you do during the class visits to Democracy Now! Mm -hmm. So in the class visits we, we try to engage students not only in the content but also how we operate, how we do independent media. Uh, we try to teach them media literacy coming here. Of course working here, I mean you must be so passionate about what you do and everyone else that works here. Um, but on the other side, you know, there may be other people that don't agree or maybe uh, throwing in some negative energy. How do you kind of cope with that and maybe turn it into a positive? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important to um, hear all the voices. You know, the other voices, whether they're negative or just different, we want to hear them. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if we want to be an informed citizenry, we have to hear those voices as well. Um, and that's the point. It's not, um, the point isn't to just focus in on one section of the opinion and only show that, but really to include the other sections. And we do try that very hard. Um, oftentimes those other voices may not want to come here because our program is unedited, it's live, and the questions that are asked are open-ended so that you have time to speak. You know, you can't just say two minutes or two or less about the Iraq war. That's a big topic. It needs context. It needs all kinds of uh, information to understand that war. So Students from the Iona community slept on the steps of Spelman Hall on October 9th to raise awareness about homelessness. Throughout the evening, different groups presented aspects of the issue. Founder of the Midnight Run organization, Dale Williams, who spoke from personal experience, was the keynote speaker for the afternoon. Hi, my name is Molly Traub, and I'm a sophomore and a campus minister in the Montgomery House. Tonight is my program called Homeless Awareness Night. So tonight, each half hour, we're going to have a different program about breaking the stereotypes of homelessness. We already had Dale Williams from Midnight Run speak. So throughout the night, we hope to learn how we can advocate for the homeless, appreciate all their talents, and help them in their tough times. On September 18th, the Iona College We the People series invited New Rochelle City Clerk Benny Giles to give a lecture called Civic Engagement, Community and Democracy in the Ramita Auditorium in honor of Constitution Day. Giles spoke to Inside Iona about the importance of civic engagement. A student's going to be here at least for four years, maybe longer. And I think that as long as a person is a student here at Iona College, that they should be in, engaged in, in the school itself, but also involved in things that go around the school. I tend to think that the best thing to do is that realize that you're going to be here for a while. <clears throat> you want to make the city as, as pleasant as possible. 
And the best way to do that is to get your opinion heard by someone so that at least what you have to think about what you're thinking about and what you would like to see happen, happens. Now for Entertainment Spotlight, here's Cassie Lina. Cassie? Thanks, Kyle and Chrissy. After being arrested for a second DUI, Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps was suspended for six months by USA Swimming. He also lost six months of funding from the sport's governing body. As a result, Phelps will enter a rehab program to seek help. Students on Iona's campus gave their input on Phelps' suspension and arrest. I think it's fair that Michael Phelps is being suspended from the Olympics because this is already his second offense and it's just kind of shameful that he would let his fans down like this. I'm not surprised that Michael Phelps got a DUI because a couple years back I know he got caught smoking and he doesn't have a good rep um, going out. On October 8th, FX hit show American Horror Story returned to television. This season is titled Freak Show, where the show begins its tale in 1952 in the quiet area of Jupiter, Florida. In the town, there is a strange emergence of a dark entity threatening the town's people. The story focuses on their survival in the dying worlds of the American Carney. Let's see what students are looking forward to most about this season. I'm really excited for the new season of American Horror Story because I think it's really cool that each season the actors get to play different characters. And for exciting baby news, couple Mia Kunis and Ashton Kutcher gave birth to a baby girl named Wyatt Isabel Kutcher. As of now, no pictures have been released of their baby, but I'm sure we'll see some soon. There has been some talk of their choice of name, as Wyatt is usually a boy's name. I asked students what they thought about their name choice. I think it's kind of interesting that they named their child Wyatt, especially because it's a girl, but it's okay that they're like breaking down gender stereotypes. That's all for entertainment for this week's episode of Inside Iona. For ICTV, I'm Cassie Lina. On September 25th, the Delta Theta Beta Sorority hosted an event called Strawberries for Strength to raise an awareness and honor people who have battled cancer. Paper strawberries were given out to decorate and to write the names of loved ones who have survived, lost, or are still fighting cancer. Inside Iona reporter Ariana Perez has more. So it's really important for us to hold events that have personally affected the sisters of Delta Theta Beta and um, it seems like cancer has affected almost everyone. Um, me personally, my great grandmother passed away. Um, she was thankfully at the ripe old age of 86, but also a um, close family friend passed away really young. Um, and it just seems like everyone has a personal connection. Um, so it's important to raise money and awareness for this. On this segment of Chrissy's Couch, I sat down with junior Emma Kaahina to ask her about her new year at Iona. She gave ICTV a special cover performance of her favorite Sam Smith song. Here's a look. Hi everyone, this is Chrissy Bookie. Welcome back again to Watch Chrissy's Couch. Today we're interviewing Emma Kaahina. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is Emma Kaha'aina. Um, I am the RA on the seventh floor of Loftus. Uh, this is my first year as an RA, and um, so far this year has been a total whirlwind of emotions, of opportunities, um, chances to help others grow, but mainly um, see growth within myself, which I'm really excited about. And um, so the song that I want to sing for you is Leave Your Lover by Sam Smith. Um, this summer I was absolutely obsessed with him. And um, I live right below Calvin Naharo, who lives on the eighth floor of um, Loftus. And he and I will come in and we'll just sing Sam Smith all songs all the time. Um, he absolutely loves him as well. So um, hope you like it. <laughs> Rolling down this road, waiting for you to bring me from out the cold. You never know the endless nights, the rhyme and the rain, or how it feels to fall behind and watch you call her name. Pack up and leave everything. Don't you see what I can? 
just beating hard and playing Send my midnight so free I will give you all of me Leave your lover Leave her for me Leave your lover Leave her for me Our drinks to grow and old. Oh, I'm in love with you. You never know. And if I can't have you, I'll walk the side below. Spare you the rising storm and let the rivers flow. You never know the endless light. Feels to fall behind and watch your car name. Pack up and leave everything. Don't you see what I can bring? Can't keep this beating heart at bay. Set my midnight so free. I will give you all of me. Leave your lover. Leave her for just leave your lover, leave her for me, leave your lover, leave her for me. That wraps it up for this episode of Inside Iona. Remember to keep up with Iona College Television. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube page. And a special thanks to the TV Studio Production Class for assisting with the production of this episode. For all of us at ICTV, I'm Kyle Byrne. And I'm Chrissy Bookie. See you next time.